<clears throat> yeah, hello, welcome uh, to a new video. This is um, a new video in the E4, E5 repertoire series. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think it's part six. Um, yeah, we've come to um, the Four Knights game, which, uh, yeah, is uh, very, yeah, very fittingly named because the Four Knights get into play. Um, at the beginning of the game and this video um, will be about all lines besides uh, d4 in the four knights game position here d4 will get um, a separate video or maybe I will do that um, together with the scotch game because it uh, yeah easily can transpose and uh, is quite similar to the scotch also called the scotch four knights here so um, we'll do any uh, all other moves, and uh, there are quite a couple. Um, the most uh, common move besides d4 here is bishop b5, um, this one. But um, let's um, go with the rarer moves first. Um, a move that is sometimes played here is, is g3, and uh, this is quite similar to the... Oops, I got this damn ad again. Come on, okay, uh, g3, and um, this is um, quite similar to the Vienna game with g3, just to show this year. And um, in this position, we had uh, d5, takes, knight takes, takes here, knight c6, knight f3 as the main line, and then I had bishop e7, but uh, black can also play bishop c5 or bishop d6. Our moves are fine. Um, in the four knights, it is actually um, quite similar and can uh, and usually does transpose. So we have uh, g3 here, and then d5 takes on d5, knight takes, and bishop g2 takes on c3, bishop e7, and we just transposed. Or as mentioned, bishop d6 or bishop c5 are also. Um, very much okay for black. So this is uh, transposi transposition, but um, black also has got some uh, interesting um, alternatives in this move order. One move here, which was uh, suggested by uh, German Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson in his uh, E4, E5 repertoire DVD, is uh, Knight D4, which is a quite funny looking move. It's sort of a yeah, Belgrade gambit. We'll come to that later from Black's uh, perspective. Um, it's uh, quite similar to this uh, this opening, the idea at least. And it seems to me that, um, as he suggested on the DVD, that this move is also very good and um, leads to leads, leads to fine play for Black. I won't go into details here, but if you want some alternatives, this is possible. Also, I'd like to mention a really uh, shocking move here. Black can also play in this position the absolutely amazing move knight takes e4, sacrificing a piece. And um, we'll come later, or oh, just in a few seconds, to, um, to a line for white, which is quite similar to this idea. The idea is if white recaptures, black plays d5, and in this position, White would like to play knight g3, but he cannot because uh, on g3 there's a pawn. So he goes to c3 and then d4 is played. And um, if White now tries to uh, secure his knight, let's say um, he returns it all the way to, to b1, then Black uh, pushes further and gets some pretty nice compensation for this piece. It's, uh, I know it's hard to believe it, but this is actually playable for black. Okay, I don't want to spend half an hour to, to demonstrate why it is, uh, is playable. <laughs> I just want to mention, if you look for some shocking <laughs> move to, uh, to really surprise your opponent, you can take on e4. But only if you study this uh, independently from this presentation, um, showing it would be just too much. And also, as I said, uh, d5 is uh, a really simple way to get a decent position. Um, mentioning this idea of a yeah, strange knight sacrifice, in this position actually the really uh, amazing move knight takes e5 is uh, a possibility. 
the so-called Halloween Gambit. I'm not quite sure where the name comes from. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite um, quite cool that this move is uh, yeah even worth to look at, but uh, it is in fact. Knight takes d4, and now black has uh, more than one way to get a good position, but it took some time to figure that out really by analysts. Um, I'll, sh I'll show I'll show them both uh, just to uh, to give a choice here. A simple solution is knight c6. Just drop the knight back, then d5. And in this position now, bishop b4, developing a piece, and just returning this knight on c6, not bothering to save it and give white a huge center. D takes c6, knight takes e4, and we can see that. Um, yeah, black gets uh, active in the center immediately. So the return of the material um, yeah, has um, some benefits as you get nice development. Queen d4 attacks both e4 and b4. And now the move queen e7, which uh, covers all and threatens knight takes c3 check. So white needs to cover the e-file. And then, for instance, just taking on c3 and bishop b6. And black is um, slightly better in this position. You've got a better... I don't know, maybe it's even more than slightly better. Black get, um, gets um, a solid pawn structure and also has got the idea of bishop e5, which also comes into play if white dares to capture on g7. So this is a simple solution to this somewhat crazy gambit. The best, um, oops, maybe the, the most ambitious way to play this is knight g6. Just to show it briefly, e5, return back, bishop c4. And now we can see that black has, in fact, slight development issues. And the best move here is d5, immediately returning one pawn and get the development going for some for some tempi. Um, or gain some tempi to get the development going. That's a better expression. So here a tempo on the bishop. And now queen d7 and black untangles here his pieces and has got an extra piece for two pawns. This is uh, maybe the cleanest way to play this, but it's uh, still somewhat complicated. So a simple solution as mentioned is to return the piece on on c6 this this line and you will you will just get a fine position without any any huge uh, problems. Um White has got some really rare moves here, but they are sometimes played. Um, a3 is um, is a move. It's uh, quite uh, quite strange. <laughs> it just uh, gives up a tempo, but it's sometimes played. The idea is to uh, yeah set a little trap. If um, if Black plays Bishop c5 here, oops, then uh, this counter pseudo sacrifice is quite interesting for White as. In this kind of position, black would like to play bishop b4 and he cannot here. So this is um, is interesting for white. Um, but black has uh, multiple options. He can go bishop e7, which is a good move. Or I would su suggest simply to play d5 here. And um, black gets a, yeah, kind of a four knight scotch reversed. a3 is simply um, a pretty useless extra move. Um, it's not a really fearsome move, a3, but you sometimes get this stuff. Bishop e2 is, uh, I think, even more harmless. You can just play d5 and uh, and get this position. And here, white um, doesn't have um, any active possibilities. You can just continue developing with bishop e7 castles or take on c3, bishop d6. So it's just uh, fine development and nothing much to worry about. Um, the main moves here are the moves that are most often played, as mentioned, are d4 and bishop b5. But uh, a move that is uh, played quite often, um, very often by people who don't um, really, uh, who didn't really study the theory well and don't know the the correct answer, is bishop c4. And uh, yeah, this is even this is a slight. A slight um, inaccuracy at least because um, black has the pseudo sacrifice on d4 knight takes e4 on e4 not d4 knight takes e4 and um, this um, leads to pretty easy play for black 
and very often if white uh, is not careful it can even be uh, better for black pretty 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 quickly um, a further mistake here would be to take on f7 but it's uh, not uncommon to to get this in, in blitz or bullet games um, people simply want to drag the king out on, on f7 but in fact black already has a pretty clear advantage after d5 because black has a, a full center here e5 and d5 has got two bishops and will gain time on the knights white can go to g3 after which black uh, even pushes on here with e4 knight back there's no other square very unlucky and then bishop c5 and black just um, develops freely queen f6 is a move to consider next need to be careful about queen h5 check attacking the king the check and d5 so need to be careful a bit because the king needs one or two moves to get into safety usual moves would be rook f8 and king g8 and black just is better um, sometimes the check also uh, comes here and then you just drop back to g8 the king is a bit boxed in at the moment but there are no pieces that attack it and on for instance d3 here black just plays h6 and sends off this knight to the rim on h3 um, black now has some multiple good moves uh, um, a good one for instance is just taking this and queen f6 followed by bishop d6 or bishop c5 and rook f8 with pressure on f2 and f3 the knight doesn't have a natural protection on g2 so black is already better here clearly better it's uh, close to um, close to collapsing the white position so taking on f7 really is a mistake but you get it surprisingly often um a gambit idea is castles actually and this you can just answer by um by um knight f6 if you want just return and also return the pawn with um, a pretty equal position it's a bit dull but uh, black is fine idea is c6 and d5 to, to follow and blunt this bishop on uh, c4 the knight on c3 also isn't very well placed after a move like c6 and d5 um, also black could could take here and play bishop e7 which is also also fine queen d5 wins back the pawn but black develops freely so just return the pawn on this gambit if it uh, should occur very ra very rare though um yeah knight takes e4 of course just capturing is the most common move and then play black plays um, d5 bishop d3 and here um black has actually two options funny enough um the main move and the one i would uh, recommend for just simple for some simplicity um, is just taking on e4. In a recent book um, by Grandmaster Larry Kaufman, the Kaufman repertoire also did a book review on that. He actually states that uh, this should lead to a slight advantage uh, for white and he uh, recommends instead the funny move uh, knight to b4 as being equal. I had a short look at this and this move uh, yeah, seems to be fine. It's also can also check this uh, with a computer and see that black um, yeah gets this piece back anyway um it's quite um, it's quite uh, funny uh, this move um if you uh, are interested you can have a look at this and uh, play this maybe to shock your opponent even more <laughs> but um the simple approach is still to take here and i'm not quite convinced that in this kind of position he has castles castles rookie one rookie eight and then i think d3 and this he uh, assesses as slightly better for white i'm not sure i think it's pretty much equal maybe white uh, has a slight advantage hard to tell but it's nothing uh, to worry about really black has got a good development no bad pieces so it shouldn't be anything um, anything special for white um but okay if you think this is a bit too too i don't know too boring or whatever then you can check out this knight before move <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> funny move um also i uh, i found that um this move f5 is even a possibility but uh, the simple approach is taking on e4 and you're okay um yeah this is bishop c4 it's uh, actually not uncommon to get this and it's a good tip also for for junior players 
often the white um, the white players um, so younger players with um, uh, and uh, younger players that um, maybe um, know this line from from their trainers their coaches uh, showing them that this is a, a decent way to develop your pieces um, um, then it's a good good idea to to play a 94 and uh, immediately get some play going instead of just copying everything and um, yeah this is not the most inspiring position it's uh, no problem at all for black I think um, if you uh, play the Italian game which we will look at later then it's um, I think almost unavoidable to, to play this position but it's no big deal but taking only four is uh, I think just a better move in comparison okay um, yeah, these uh, have been uh, the somewhat rarer moves um, so now off to bishop b5 yeah bishop b5 is um, a slightly I must admit annoying line for black in, um, in a particular respect it is quite annoying for black if you um, are trying to play for a win because um, there are some lines which are very very boring so it's um, useful to know a line for black here um, to get a little bit of complications going and uh, allow you to play for a win I will just show briefly uh, which lines are the problematic ones in regards to draw just to briefly show also the alternatives the most interesting move actually in this position and um, also the one you would like to play <laughs> is knight d4 not my choice I'll show my choice later but uh, the problem the slight um, practical problem with this move is that white has got the very boring option to take on d4 here if white plays one of the main moves bishop a4 or or bishop c4 then black um, can get very interesting a uh, gambit play with c5 sacrificing uh, bishop c5 sacrificing the five pawn this is uh, very interesting for black and also um, yeah leads to really um, really cool active active play but um, yeah the, the slight issue is white can capture here black takes e5 and now this knight doesn't have any square to go <laughs> so black needs to take here captures here and now black uh, could win a pawn on d2 but this is very dangerous as white's development uh, advantage um, yeah gets to um, gets too alarming so you need to take here and now white takes here and it's uh, indeed quite difficult to to play for a win here white will just um, exchange even more pieces or play bishop d3 bishop e3 the e-file is open and those bishops are pretty static in this position you cannot really do much um, it's of course um, nothing to really worry about in terms of yeah getting problems or anything it's uh, just okay for black but it's just not the position you you want if you if you need to win a game so uh, it's fine against a good player um, who you will know that he will play for win and play something complicated but um, it's uh, it's it's really annoying if you um, expect your opponent to take here on d4 another possibility is bishop b4 uh, this is also very boring in case white takes here which um, leads to a position like this and um, yeah I don't know bishop somewhere and this is also very drawish you've got opposite colored bishops a complete symmetrical completely symmetrical pawn structure and uh, not much to play for c7 also is an issue here you cannot easily play queen f6 or something this is also very boring so um, yeah what what can you do after bishop b5 to get some um, interesting play going at the end I went for um, bishop c5 here another alternative which um, can be recommended to uh, maybe some of the stronger players who know 
um, what kind of risks they are <laughs> able to take is uh, bishop d6, which looks um, yeah somewhat weird, of course, because it blocks the c8 bishop. This move is uh, playable, though. Black intends to castle, rook e8, bishop f8 back if, at the end. Um, also something you could look at. Okay, but uh, I went for bishop c5. This is also the recommendation in the already mentioned uh, book by um, Grandmaster Kaufman. Um, I always thought that this move uh, would be problematic for black, but um, he, he showed some lines in this book, I checked them and I think black is, is really okay. So at the end this is my recommendation. The problem with this move is actually that white has got the opportunity to yeah, to sacrifice on e5, um, just like black sacrificed on e4 after the bishop c4 move. So black takes d4, bishop d6, and now white, um, in order to um, yeah play ambitiously, goes for f4. If he just recaptures here then uh, the position is quite similar um, to the bishop c4 knight e4 line just with reversed colors. White has got the extra move bishop b5. It's questionable though that uh, the bishop really is doing something there. Very often white will um, yeah, just drop this bishop back to d3 and you got exactly the same position just with <laughs> colors reversed. <laughs> quite funny. Um, I think, as I already mentioned, I think this is pretty equal, so nothing to worry about. The more ambitious move after bishop d6 here is uh, f4. And um, yeah, here black needs to know what he's doing, especially where to drop the knight. The best square is c6 here, and now white goes e5. He needs to get the pawn back after all, uh, the piece back after all. Bishop b4 now, securing the bishop. And now white grabs on f6. He cannot um, delay this forever. And now you recapture. And I think, um, yeah, black has um, a pretty good position here, I think. Those uh, pawn moves f4 and d4 don't really, um, yeah, fit, um, fit together too well. A possible continuation here is um, bishop e3. And after this, black should play d5. Let's say castles, takes on c3 and bishop f5. And this also highlights why those um, pawns f4 and d4 don't uh, really uh, harmonize so well because e4 is a very weak square and uh, black immediately um, drops this bishop to this square or tries to go to this square. And I think black is um, yeah, maybe already more than equal. It's, um, I think I would prefer black here. Um, this is just a great square on e4. Another um, possibility would be, oops, instead of bishop e3, a3. After which um, you got a choice, you can capture still. Or bishop a5 is also playable. Just capture and uh, d5 is uh, fine though. It's a bit uh, different because white now also um, has the chance to play f5. And this is the difference to the to the line before. Still, I think black uh, doesn't have any any uh, big big problems. Um, also, as mentioned, bishop a5 is a is a plan here. Uh, this kind of position, I think you can you can simply play. You don't need to learn uh, long variations. So, bishop e uh, knight e5 is basically fine. So the alternative is castles, and black also just castles. Um, here. White has uh, multiple options, but um, the only really testing one is still the sacrifice. It's, uh, of course, um, quite similar. It's just uh, with both sides um, castling moves inserted. Um, but just quickly before we go to 95, the alternatives. One alternative here is bishop c6, dc6, and uh, now white has a choice. He can play a quiet move like d3, or he can capture. And this is a quite interesting difference between um, bishop c5 and bishop b4. In the bishop b4 line, after rook e8, white could play knight d3, 
which attacked the bishop on b4 and the bishop on b4 didn't really have much alternative than uh, just capture on c3 otherwise you're just a pawn down uh, but here black has uh, alternatives he can drop this bishop to d4 is one possibility simply blocking a white's development also bishop g4 is interesting which leaves white with the only move queen e1 quite ugly and then um, bishop d4 and white has got some problems to really uh, get his development going e4 is under pressure he cannot kick the g3 uh, g4 uh, bishop with f3 as this pawn is pinned and on h3 you just uh, drop the bishop back to to h5 or maybe even uh, bishop d7 is an idea c5 bishop c6 to come so black has quite interesting pressure here for this pawn it's not a dead drawn position or anything so this is um, much more fighting than in the bishop b4 line if white plays it slow and uh, just develops with d3 you should take the chance to play bishop g4 this is quite strong i think h3 bishop h5 and in this position uh, we've set a little trap if white wants to kick this bishop you can really sacrifice the knight here and white is in a very annoying pin on the f3 knight he doesn't have a bishop anymore that could break this pin on e2 or protect the knight on g2 so he's completely in this pin just protecting protecting the knight with the queen so a line like bishop e3 bishop d6 king g2 to protect the knight f5 is super dangerous for instance queen e1 queen d7 knight h2 and f4 and black has an, i think a decisive attack already so it's a useful idea to remember this kind of uh, sacrifice especially if um, white is so yeah ill placed to um, to get rid of this pin um, black really is clearly better here um, so white might prepare g4 with bishop g5 after which you can uh, just go here and um, now white has an alternative he can give you the complete bishop pair which is fine of course or he could drop back here after which for instance g5 bishop g3 knight d7 is very fine for black here black actually um, has got a positional threat queen f6 and queen f6 would um, further damage the pawn structure and kill this bishop on g3 this is a classic theme in um, in open games let's say queen e2 just for instance queen f6 rook d1 and now this kind of this kind of structure this is uh, very useful to remember this was first shown by um, by uh, world champion Capablanca in a classic game I think against uh, Winter Winter was the white player and uh, the problem is that the bishop on g3 is just a dead piece and it will never move anywhere because of this sick double pawn he cannot activate this bishop it's basically a piece down so black is uh, very fine here it's a useful um, pattern to remember um, so what else is there after rook e8 after capturing here rook e8 white can also drop back to f3 i forgot that then you can just get the pawn back and you've got the bishop pair in an open position so all um yeah all fine to uh, to get uh, to get a good game um what else is there d3 d3 you can white can play d3 just um, trying to develop the c1 bishop after this you can go rook e8 and just uh, develop um, further or an interesting move here is um, also knight d4 the idea is that uh, the pawn grab here is punished um, here with d6 knight f3 bishop g4 and uh, white gets ugly an ugly pawn formation on the king side a possible continuation would be would be this here first kicking the bishop back and then knight h5 and queen h4 black has a nice attack here and no problems at all rook g1 queen 
queen h3 for instance and um, f3 is a huge problem white is i think forced to um, return material here already so knight d4 is a, is a good option if white recapt uh, captures here you can recapture with the bishop with the pawn you can also take but this is just simpler and now black easily continues developing with c6 possibly with d5 would be the ambitious way or just c6 d6 and uh, getting the bishop out um, it's very um, useful to remember that um, exchanging this knight on c6 against the knight on f3 is very often useful for black there are almost no cases where this kind of exchange would be harmful the point being that the knight on c6 is uh, not the greatest piece ever it's not doing so much especially if white later on plays c3 at some point let's say knight e2 and c3 then the knight doesn't have any huge um, yeah first um, huge uh, prospects if um, black exchanges this he also is able to to use the c and d pawn freely c6 d5 or c6 d6 so the knight d4 is a nice active uh, alternative especially as the pawn grab leads to attractive play this is already a quite rare position though so knight e5 is uh, is the critical move black recaptures d4 bishop d6 and f4 otherwise it's uh, just not enough to to get something white could take again and this would transpose to the mentioned line above when white took on e5 on move five so bishop d3 rook e8 and yeah the same pretty equal position that we had before so um again f4 is the the move to go and now it's useful you need to remember here that knight g4 is um, the correct move and the idea will become obvious later e5 the main move also possible is bishop e2 retreating the the bishop on b5 and attacking the knight then you should just um, give the material back with uh, bishop b4 bishop takes takes on c3 bc3 knight e4 bishop f3 d5 and black is very fine he's got this whole if on e4 again to to play with uh, an ideal scenario would be something like bishop f5 knight d6 bishop e4 getting both pieces to control e4 very nice so black has no huge problems so e5 is the main move and then you just retreat to e7 after which um, white can try bishop e2 or h3 it leads to um, somewhat similar positions h3 and now important d6 you return the piece if white takes on g4 you can recapture with the knight bishop e2 and then h5 and <clears throat> ah, sorry um, this kind of setup is um, yeah somewhat risky for white as the knight on d4 is uh, a constant worry ideas like um, queen to h4 can be really powerful so um, I don't think this that h3 takes g4 is really a good idea um, so takes on f6 is uh, the safer option and then black recaptures this is the idea also why knight g4 was the move here because you want to have the chance to recapture on f6 with a knight um, and now a possible continuation would be g4 very aggressive it's d5 bishop d3 c6 black just is very solid and he has ideas to play on this e4 square later let's say queen f3 queen b6 a3 of course black cannot take on d4 now because of bishop e3 but a good plan here and the plan to remember is knight e8 bishop e3 and f5 blocking this um, this f pawn and getting the knight on d6 and then on e4 next move 
and black is fine e4 is just a great square to to use and white is still uh, lots of moves away from getting a knight to um, e5 himself so uh, black is, is very very okay here um yeah what else um white can go bishop e2 and this is uh, very similar you go d6 and this way return the piece f5 trying to use the bishop on c1 and also avoiding this somewhat rigid f4 d4 structure d5 now bishop g5 rook e8 queen d3 and now important the setup c3 rook a e1 and then b5 black gains space on the queen side and um, has a very solid position in the center and on uh, on his king side white uh, won't get any attack going or anything and this b5 move also um, might allow to push the knight back from c3 and further play on uh, getting this um, e4 square also just a5 bishop a a6 and b4 might be an idea so I don't see any huge problems for black and it's still a, a fighting position maybe it's a round equal but uh, certainly nothing you need to be uh, afraid of and uh, it's easily imaginable that you can also win games from this position it's not uh, not really a dry sort of affair so this was the four knights it's not not so much uh, or theory it's not a very yeah theoretically demanding opening for black you just need to be aware of the the mentioned uh, drawish lines if you need to win to to avoid them so um recap briefly here on g3 we had uh, d5 and the transposition to the vienna game line from arising from uh, move to knight c3 and 3 g3 just the transposition we had um, the slow moves a3 and bishop e2 after which you can go d5 um, on bishop c4 you need to remember this yeah this pseudo sacrifice here getting the piece back um, quickly and also setting the trap for y to take here which is really bad um yeah there was the crazy line ninety five, the halloween gambit after which the simplest continuation was this one returning the piece and um, getting active play in the center um after bishop b5 being the main move here the recommendation was um, bishop c5 and then you need to take a look mostly at uh, th this fork trick lines line or oops the same affair after both um players have castled also 95 here is the critical the critical move what you need to remember is that uh, especially here knight g4 is the right move to um to allow the knight to retake on f6 and this gives black an har harmonious uh, setup yeah the four knights not too uh, dangerous but sometimes quite boring if you um yeah if you're not careful with selecting your line um if you don't mind a draw really or a very stale position then my recommendation here after bishop b5 would be knight d4 it's really leads to fascinating uh, fascinating play if white doesn't go for this line but it's 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 simply something you need to consider if you don't mind this, 94 is a great move and very interesting to study. Yeah, this um, was the Four Nights game. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think the next video um, will be about the Scotch. Um, and this um, also will include, um, I think, this, this line as it can easily transpose. Yeah, well, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and um, yeah, talk to you soon with the next part of the series or maybe in some other video. I'm not quite sure. Talk to you soon, of course. <laughs>